Hi everybody and welcome back to Sweatpants BI in part 9 of our full length HR report walkthrough and I promise we're almost done with this HR report. I know it's taken a while. Uh, we're going to focus on building a really cool cover page for our HR report. I see a lot of H of uh, just Power BI reports in general that just throw the audience right into the data, right into the data visuals. And I, in my personal experience, that's a great way to just immediately overwhelm people who don't feel data savvy, who have never used Power BI before, or who are just you know a little bit uncomfortable with analytics in, in general. So what a cover page helps me do is just provide a little bit of context to my users right out of the gate before they get into any data visuals and also sort of give them a lay of the land. I use it for things like page navigation, kind of like a table of contents thing. Sometimes I use it to explain, you know, what data we're looking at, what metrics people are going to find. It's really just kind of a, a, a cover page is really just a way of kind of easing your users into the report and its content so that they're not immediately overwhelmed. You know, you're really just kind of giving them a bit of a teaser and sort of helping them understand everything that all the options that they have before they jump into the weeds of things. So in this example, I'm going to be kind of combining PowerPoint and Power BI again, but primarily I'm going to be showing you some really, really cool tricks for navigation buttons that you can integrate with your cover page if that's something that you haven't done before. So let's go ahead and jump back into Power BI and get cracking on our cover page. So really all we're gonna do is we're gonna just kind of cherry pick the best uh, attributes of our design and our layout. And we're just gonna kind of copy and paste them over to a new page. And then we're going to build some buttons that will help users quickly navigate between the headcount retention and turnover pages. Yes, you know, when you publish this Power BI report, most of your users could just click on these tabs, but where's the fun in that? We're gonna build a really dynamic and very impressive looking cover page, really just to kind of get people on board. We want them impressed right out of the gate. Now we wanna kind of set the stage for all of the data that to follow. So let's go ahead and hop back over to uh, PowerPoint. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're just gonna create um, let's try two new tabs. I think I might need a second one. And of course, it, we still have sort of the background of this uh, ugly theme that we picked because it had pretty colors. So let's go ahead and open up our design options. I need to format my background, hide the background graphics, and just do a solid fill. Doesn't really matter what color we make the second page. You'll understand why in just a moment, but I'm not really doing anything with the formatting on this page. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm just gonna go ahead and copy my footer because I am going to carry this over to my new report page. And then I'm also going to go ahead and grab my header and I'm gonna bring it in, but I am going to do something pretty different with it. I'm gonna drag it just like so, so that I still have that orange color pop, but now it's mostly on the left side of the screen. Everything still looks good, but it's definitely obvious that orange is my primary color that I'm gonna be using in the report. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab this icon and I'm gonna copy it over, but since I've got a lot more room here and I don't need to save room for data, let's go ahead and regroup everything. In other words, we're just grouping, whoops, everything that makes up the icon so that I can make it a little bit larger uh, without too much trouble. And then I might even play with uh, giving it a shadow or a drop shadow just to make it pop even a little bit more. I'm going to move it until it's almost perfectly aligned in that top corner. Now let's go ahead and grab our title here. And of course, we kind of uh, faded out HR report so that we could call out headcount. But now this is the first page of our report. So let's go ahead and make it white, nice and bold. And I'm going to increase the size so that it's very much the star of the show on this first page. I know HR report is a fairly boring title, but no big deal. We don't need anything too fancy here. Next, because I'm literally too lazy to write my own copy, especially on reports that I'm just demonstrating for you and not shipping out to an actual uh, company, I'm just gonna paste in some boilerplate uh, 
descriptive uh, text or copy that I got from ChatGPT. I literally told ChatGPT just to write me a brief description for a uh, HR analysis report that contains information on retention, uh, headcount, and turnover. And I actually thought that what it generated was, you know, perfectly uh, good enough for my purposes here. And so I'm just going to kind of drag that into position. And because I have sort of white text on this kind of light background here, just to kind of make this a little bit fancier, let's go ahead and give this a dark gray background, but it's mostly going to be transparent. I literally just want enough darkness kind of behind this text so that someone can easily read it. But I also want everything to feel nice and balanced uh, with sort of this orange and light gray background that I have here. So I'm already almost done, honestly, uh, with this page. The thing that I want to do now is I want to create some cool navigation buttons. And this is also a trick that you can take with you across all of your Power BI reports. But what I'm going to do is I'm just go going to go ahead and drag a few image images into place. I want them all to be the same size, and I'm hoping that I can fit three in a row here. Uh, really, I, I'm just trying to fit one for every single page in my report. Headcount, retention, and turnover. I'm going to put them all in a line here. And I'm not going to need uh, any kind of outlines on these three rectangles. So let's just go up to Shape Outline and say No Outline. And for each of these, what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to be filling them with a picture and in this case, I'm just going to use stock images. And what I really want is I want the cheesiest images of business people that I can find. I want people to know that this is a uh, HR headcount business uh, people uh, sort of report. So let's just go ahead and pick uh, this young woman seems very businessy. So let's go ahead and just throw her picture into the background here. Let's go up to our picture formatting settings. Let's go to crop and say that we want to fill. Uh, this picture with this uh, delightful looking uh, woman and I will position it like so. And of course, I just kind of want to do the same thing for the other um, blocks that I have here. Let's go ahead and ins uh, insert into the background of this one another picture. I need a stock photo again of business people. You don't have to use stock photos uh, depending on your company. You know, maybe you work somewhere that uh, actually ha generates its own stock photos within the company that you could use on something like this. Let's see, this picture also seems appropriately kind of businessy. And let's go ahead and grab one more stock photo for the last one. And let's see, I like ones that are nice and kind of, you know, zoomed in, you know, people looking like they're doing business stuff, looking like they're having fun doing business stuff. Let's go ahead and let's see, this guy looks like he, he likes what he does. I'm also trying to find people that look like, especially with the white backgrounds and the walls that like hypothetically they could be at the same company. Okay, all three of these people look like they're on the job. So what I'm going to do real quickly is I'm just going to multi-select these three images. I'm going to go to my picture format settings. I'm going to go to color and I'm just going to kind of experiment and see what these different images look like. I want something that's going to kind of fall into the background a little bit. I think that looks pretty decent to me. Okay, and now that I've applied those uh, settings, I'm just going to quickly undo them. And I'm going to copy those three pictures over here. And now let's just go back super quickly and reapply those settings. And now what I'm going to do real quickly here is I am just going to save. Let's go ahead and head to our backgrounds. I'm actually going to create a new folder here for cover images. And let's go with um, headcount off. I'm just going to copy that. What these are basically going to be are inactive or non-hovered on uh, pictures 
that I can use as uh, navigation buttons in Power BI. And that might have sounded like gibberish, no problem. It'll make a lot more sense once I apply it. And fortunately, it's not even gonna be all that hard to apply. And our last guy here, let's see, turn over on. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and literally, I'm just gonna cut those pictures for now. Don't really need them, I'll just drop them right there. And let's go ahead and save this background image as a JPEG. I'm gonna save it to my backgrounds. This is going to be my cover page image. And now let's go ahead and hop back over to Power BI. I'm gonna bring in our cover page background. fit it and reduce our transparency to zero. There it is. Now let's go ahead and grab a button and a blank button will do perfectly. And I'm just gonna quickly resize these to what I need. I'm also going to mute my phone since people are blowing me up about some kind of party that I probably won't go to. There we go. And now I'm going to adjust the style settings here and I'm going to remove the border. I don't think I'll need it, but we can always add it back later. And let's go ahead and browse for our first cover image, which is going to be head count off. And we want to fit that and reduce its transparency to zero. And this is looking almost exactly how I hoped it would. I'm going to go ahead and copy this a couple more times. And what we want to do is we want to go ahead and give this some default settings. So we're going to call, of course, this one headcount page. You can bold it, you can format it however you like. Basically, we're just trying to identify this as our headcount page. And I'm going to go ahead and put this at the very bottom here and make it nice and large. And now let's go ahead and change our hover settings. And for our hover settings, instead of using the off version of this picture, I want to use the on version of the picture. And of course, set the image fit to fit so that we end up with sort of this effect where when the user hovers on it, of course, it lights up, letting us know that we can click on that image to go to that page in our report. Now, when I hover on this, of course, there's kind of a white background. So maybe you want to adjust the font to change as well. When the user hovers on it, you know, uh, you might have to experiment a little bit with this because of the contrast, or maybe you want to utilize the light space at the top, totally up to you. Usually you just have to kind of play with this stuff a little bit. Let's go back to my default and put this at the top. That's looking a little bit better. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. Now let's go ahead and focus on the next one. And of course, let's turn this back to default. Let's go ahead and write in our text here, which for this one is going to be retention. I'm gonna go ahead and copy over my formatting. So I've got retention now. And for this one, of course, I want it to be turnover. I'm gonna go ahead and copy my same formatting over so now I've got three different pages here. I just need to fix the images for these two navigation um, buttons. So let's change our default image for retention to retention off. Let's set it to fit. And let's set our hover image under apply settings to, to head count on. Whoops, let's make it fit. The retention is still not really showing up very well uh, due to the uh, lack of contrast. So let's try going white. And you can see it's still a little bit hard to read. You might have to play a little bit with like dropping it down. It's a cool effect, but this is honestly kind of the uh, annoying part of doing it this way. I'll even change the default to 
by adjusting the padding here, I'm just dropping the text down a little bit. And you can sort of play with this and balance it as well as you can. Okay, and now let's go ahead and do our last hover image, which is going to be this gentleman. I think I might still be on hover, and I am. So let's go ahead and make sure that we're on the default settings. And we want our picture to be this gentleman here. Set it to fit. And let's go ahead and make sure that our hover image is set to the on version of the same picture. And overall, that's not looking too bad. I wish that his hair weren't right behind uh, turnover, but not a whole lot that I can do. So we, of course, we can try dropping it down, and it's a little bit better. But overall, I'm still getting the effect that I wanted to get on all three of these buttons. I opted not to go with the blue highlight here just to make sure that retention is as readable as possible. But, you know, still, we've got three pretty good buttons here. Let's go ahead and make sure that the spacing is equal between all three of them by multi-selecting and then distributing horizontally. The only thing left to do now is to actually set up the page navigation, which of course we just click on headcount page, turn on the action, set the page navigation to headcount, and then do the same thing for retention. Set the page navigation action to retention. And finally, set the action on Mr. Turnover to our turnover page. And there we go. There's our cover page. And all we have to do, of course, is just click on one of these and it immediately takes us to the retention page or to our turnover page. There we go. So at this point, we are effectively done with our HR report, except we shouldn't just, you know, quit here and call it a day. In part 10, the final part of this HR report series, what we're going to do to just wrap things up is we're going to make another pass through the report and just take care of some finishing touches to make sure that this report is absolutely perfect and as immaculate as it can be before we would publish this and start sharing it with our stakeholders and making it more widely available in our enterprise. So thank you so much so much for sticking around for this 10-part series for this HR report full-length walkthrough. I can't wait to you know wrap this up with you in part 10.